Welcome, I'll be reacting to Outlander, Season 1, Episode 6. This is not a market substitute. Please support the original. I appreciate your concern, Lieutenant. And I can assure you, I'm a guest of the Clan Mackenzie. Claire. Nevertheless, I'm certain my commander will wish to speak with you. He's presently in residence at the inn at Brockton. Will you accompany me? Well. If the lady goes, I'll go. Mm -hmm. This could go horribly wrong very quickly. But they were still the British Army I'd been a part of for six long years. And somehow it felt... Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. There would be a sort of kinship there. I'm not sure if it was still true in this particular era, but in earlier times, the red in the red coats was made of a dye that was actually crushed bugs. I'm curious if that was still true in the 18th century. That always fascinated me, that their coats' color was made out of bugs. I'm actually gonna go to one of my favorite places, which is Townsend's Plus, because everybody has a plus nowadays. Paramount Plus, Disney Plus. This is the equivalent for 18th century folks. Yeah. It's very easy to use. All you do is put them in your mortar and pestle and crush them. And you end up with Looks like, uh, a like fabric chili dye. pepper or something. Yes, yeah. no, it's a fabric That's dye. That's so fabric weird. Dye. Yes, okay. and also. Uh, you'll notice that it's very bright red. Mm -hmm. It was called mm -hmm. carmine sure. red. Guess who used the most of this? Mm hmm. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was the British. That's okay. how they got those red coats. Okay. But, mm -hmm. but it's not a seed. Mm. It's not even a plant. It's a bug. <laughs> they used it from the cochineal beetle. They got it in Mexico. This is the same thing. Special thanks to Townsend's Plus for that little rabbit trail. Check them out. They're awesome. A most enjoyable surprise. It has been far too long since I last gazed upon a lovely English rose. Lieutenant here claims you have quite the story to tell. War chief, eh? I'll say this for you, you look the part. <laughs> a fine specimen of the local inhabitants, my lord. How am I to address you, sir? You can call me Mackenzie, if it please you. Or if we're being formal, you can call me Chief Mackenzie. Which in meters of war and bicker leaves us ever for each other as equals to any you can. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but I fail to understand a single word the creature said. <laughs> I believe, my lord. He was quite understandable. I must confess, it eluded me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Mm. It's Someone not that really hard. ought to teach these people the king's English. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's speaking English, sir. May I remind you, Lord Thomas, there are parts of England. Newcastle comes to mind where the local accent is equally unintelligible to our ears. I'll go, Claire. Yes, yes, quite right. You make a fine point, <laughs> madam. The world would make a lot more sense if everybody spoke like Londoners. If you wish to hear Londoners speak, perhaps you should have stayed in London. Ooh. Ooh. Shots fired. My lord, uh, he says no need, Lieutenant. I understood him perfectly well that time. The only thing stopping them from killing each other is this light veneer of civilization. I know you feel comfortable around them, but you have to be careful. That's a lot of wine bottles around you, Claire. I'm worried. Mesmerizing adventure. Lieutenant Foster, I imagine there'll be no difficulty in escorting Mrs. Beecham to Inverness, where she may book passage to wherever it pleases her to go. No difficulty at all, sir. <laughs> I would be forever grateful. It's a trifle, madam. You have my word on it. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. Well, at this very moment. <gasps> oh, no! We are not. You're putting the claret at risk. I suggest you step outside and rid yourself of half a league's worth of dust. By all means. We must protect the claret. Well, for a moment there, the lady did look familiar. But I can see now I was wrong. I had the same exact experience. Well, it could have gone worse. What if Captain Randall accompanies you to Inverness? No! But where you may regale him with tales of your adventure, it's sure to make the time fly by. <laughs> Mrs. No. Beecham, he was cradling his severed head, madam. Oh. 
Well, it was a sad day for Private McGreevy when he got stationed to Scotland. For all of us. Is that all you have to say? And so both sides have committed depredations they should both be ashamed of. And I'm forced to question whether the lady's morality is any clearer than her politics. Oh, this from you? Really? The Scots just want the same freedoms we enjoy. Oh, Claire, no, no, no. Freedoms no, no. we take for granted. Claire! They are not the aggressors, Captain. We are. It is their land and we are occupying it. I mean, you're right, but you're. No, this is not the place. I warned you about the why. Say, madam, I find yours. Sir, three enlisted men have been fired upon by persons unknown just outside of town. One of them, and sir, he's in a bad way. He's downstairs. We've sent for the surgeon, but Claire. no one is sure of his whereabouts. I'll go. Claire, you can help. Hurry! You have medical experience. Enough to know that you can't yes. save this arm. Begin to saw. You've stayed awake through worse. Grab his knees. You, take the shoulder. Oh, him down his throat if you can. Well, even Lord Thomas is bright enough to realize puts your loyalty in a very questionable light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your apology pleases me more than you know. I'd hate to think a king's officer would behave in such an ungentlemanly manner. Let us begin with you telling me who you are. It was not love he felt for me, it was lust. But when I refused him, he attacked me. I fled dressed only in my shift. I wouldn't believe her, but he also has a fairly low opinion of women, so he might just believe her story. We'll see. That's actually quite beautiful. Either you can cooperate with me, or I shall be forced to use methods less pleasant than talk. I've heard about your methods, Captain. I'm told that you once administered a hundred lashes upon a hundred lashes to a poor Highlander boy. He's gonna put two and two together that Jamie's there. What have you done? I love her, but she doesn't think things through. Claire! You're putting them in danger. You're putting Jamie in danger. A poor Highlander boy. I take your meaning. The thief didn't break. No, he took his punishment without making a single sound. I prefer to work on a blank canvas. A uh, hundred lashes is fatiguing to the arm. Fatiguing to the arm? The sheer judder <sighs> of the whip coursing up my arm, exploding into my heart. Feeling of power, I guess. Would not beg for mercy. Went straight to his head. It's Would interesting not. hearing about it from both perspectives. Horrifying, but interesting. Yikes. Is that enough? Is that enough? <laughs> Even the red coats are like, this is too much. I think it was in that moment that I determined to bleed him to the bone. I think all they could see was the horror. I... I could see the beauty. We were creating a masterpiece. An exquisite... I'm sorry, what? Bloody... masterpiece. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Oh, okay then. The truth carries a weight that no lie can counterfeit. This is a stunningly compelling episode. The acting in this, wow. It was like seeing inside his head. Not an area you want to see. This show is so well done. I find myself doing such things. Reddish this must be so weird for her seeing someone who looks like her husband Until saying I no things like this. The man I've become. I can't even imagine. You say that buried within is a decent man. A man that can still choose right over wrong. I believe that part of you lives still. 
I still don't trust him, though. Corporal Hawkins. <clears throat> Mrs. Beecham and I <clears throat> require your assistance. Captain Randall, you have my deepest gr- <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I saw it coming, but it's still disappointing. I'd want again. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Dougal. Be sure to deliver her to Fort William by sundown tomorrow. If she is not present uh. at the appointed time, you will be accused of harboring a fugitive from English law. I look forward to our next meeting, Mrs. Beecham. Oh. Well, there's fresh water nearby, and you look like you could use it. Water? Where? Down. A holy well. Yes! I wonder if the water spirit of the place can help them. Are you a spy for the English? Or the French? No, she's not. I promise this is the last time I'll ever ask it of you. I am not a spy. I am playing Claire Beecham and nothing more. May I ask what convinced you? It's an Indian spring. Some folk call it the liar spring. It smells like the fumes of hell itself. If you drink from that and you prove untrue, it'll burn your gizzard out. So he did basically ask the water spirit for help. I love this series so much. I can only legally refuse to hand you back to Randall if I change you from an English woman to a Scot. Oh, a, a loophole. I the love it. The only way it. I can do that is for you to marry one. No, absolutely not. I, I oh, cannot no. do that. Would you rather go to an English prison? No way. Jamie? What kind of friend would I be if I left you to that mad bastard, Randall? Gorgeous setting. Look at that. Ugh. Uh, am I promised? <laughs> yeah, I'd be grabbing that too. That was an incredible moment between Claire and Randall. I kind of think that for one second, she got through to him. Like a tiny bit. And then he went right back to being himself. This really is her only choice. If she goes to that fort, she'll be tortured and killed. And there are worse people than Jamie. I mean, he's been a really good friend to her. And kind, even though we saw in this episode what the English put him through. The fact that he could deal with that and come out the other side and still be a, a compassionate, forgiving person is remarkable. It says a lot about his character. I just hope this ploy works because while it's technically legal, it will still make Randall really angry and he's going to have even more of a reason to hate Clan Mackenzie. And now he knows Jamie's probably there. Claire is a really passionate, hard on her sleeve kind of a person, which means she's incredible. But at the same time, She's constantly saying the wrong thing and getting into trouble. <laughs> She's a Hufflepuff. I'm pretty sure. I mean, do you disagree? She's really good with people, caring, loving, and also says her mind. So to me, she's just totally a Hufflepuff. <laughs> and it's just one of the reasons I like her so much. But this whole series would have gone very differently if she just kept composed, said what they needed to hear rather than what she actually thought. It meant a lot when she started defending her friends from Clan Mackenzie, but I was just like, Claire, what are you doing? I assume next episode is going to be mostly the wedding and the aftermath of them trying to figure out how to live together when it's more of a legal arrangement and they are friends but that's it and how they're gonna navigate all that or we're going to get huge backlash from the English 
tensions are going to rise and we'll start seeing a lot more violence going on. One or the other, or both. We'll see.